Madhouse Podcasting Network. Alright, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Four Podcast. Now lately, uh, I've been hanging out with a lot of my friends over at the Queen Mary Sliders group. And this next guest is no different. Always with the group. Always uh, putting in 110% at practice. You're, you're going to love him as much as I do. I'm here with Jasper. How you doing, brother? It's good. Man. Doing good. How are you? We, we've been talk- we talked about this last week to get you on. Uh, obviously, you're a busy person. You really are. Yeah. 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 Between work, uh, doing some amazing cosplay stuff, and practices, meets, all that stuff. And, you know, I'm right there with you most of the time, I, except work. That would be weird. Um, yeah. But I'm with you at most of the events. I mean, me and you chat a lot uh, about various things, about life, about haunt. Um, so let's let's just jump into it, man. What What age did you know... You were like, fucking, I love horror. I love this haunt stuff. Like, what age, bro? Dude, when I was a kid, my my dad took me to Knott's Berry Farm. I want to say I was like 10. And as soon as I got in and they were doing their thing, I was like, that's so cool. I want to do that. I want to be you. I'm not scared of you. I want to be you. <laughs> um Ever since then, like, I've always been obsessed with horror movies. I've always liked creepy stuff. All that good stuff, think, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was, you know, you probably, you dealt with not, it seems like a lot better than I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in 2008, I went and I lasted about two hours and I was out of there, man, so. Really? Yeah, I was like fifth grade, maybe. So, Damn. Yeah, that, was a, that, was a, that was a tough one for me. But then. The redemption round came for 2011, and I went to Halloween Horror Nights, and I was like, I like this shit. Like, let's keep doing it every year. Dude, honestly, yeah. I haven't had the chance to go to Horror Nights, but, like, that is on my list. Bro, we got to go. We got to go. And yes. uh, I know, obviously, uh, from your history, you worked the one year at Queen, uh, your first year. Yes. You just yes. getting started. Obviously, we couldn't uh, get a 2020 season, sadly. Um, for people who don't know, I where you been? <laughs> where you been? <laughs> Um, but, uh, with the whole pandemic and stuff, you know, Harbor was not open, um, as most major haunts weren't. Um, so what did you do for your 2020 season? Did you just kind of, whatever was available, you know, you just kind of went over and just checked it out or what? Yeah, I actually was working at Spirit. Oh, nice. Uh, Spirit Halloween. Cause like I already worked at Spencer's and then I just did like casual like my friends had some little mini haunts going on so i went to those right that was pretty much it i mean a majority of stuff was closed sadly yeah and couldn't go to knots couldn't go to harbor couldn't go yeah, to Hay- oh hayride actually was open never mind well you could have gone was it oh. yes, hayride was open they did like a little drive drive-in style thing it was really cool oh that's um, cool so uh you know you're 10 years old you go to knots you see these guys you're like i want to do this shit when did you start actually start training your body and everything to to start sliding and whatnot so i actually it was 2016 where i was like dang sliding is a thing this is (laughs) you can do that (laughs) and after that i was like i really like i don't know where to start but i want to get involved and then um 2018 a bunch of my friends introduced me to the sliders at queen mary and actually worked that 2018 season right and then, you know, I couldn't work at the time because I was 17, uh, but I did start boot camp, which was amazing. And from there, that was it. <laughs> that was, I mean, dude, I've even seen you at practice. I've seen you in characters. I've, I've had the pleasure to watch you just do you. And it is fucking outstanding of how good this, this, this kid can fucking slide, man. <laughs> it really is. Like this kid puts in, like I said, every practice I've seen him th- thus far has put in the time, the blood, sweat, and tears, uh, just to get better and better. And you could see the improvement from when we, when we started weeks ago to, to now it's like, you could tell a lot of what dieterman has been coaching you guys and teaching you guys what to do and, and training you guys what to do is starting to pay off for you, man. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's one, honestly, like everything I know is because of him, because like, of him, yeah. because of him, he's an amazing teacher. 
Dude, that that guy, you know, you think back, obviously the first, one of the first OGs to bring that to fucking haunt, you know what I mean, sliding. So to get oh, yeah. to get taught by someone like Dieterman, it's like, it like a lot of people, and he does it, and you know, and you know, because he we're with him all the time, but he doesn't. He fucking hates when people call him legend. He hates when people call him. I know, you know yeah. this and that, all these nicknames we have for him, and it's like, but dude, but when you really think about it, you started a whole generation of something that has lived on to this day, and has spread to multiple fucking haunts, cross country, cross the globe, and. It started one birthplace, Buena Park, California. And, it, you know, you, you think of, and, and this is me getting a little off topic, but you think of California. Some of the greatest bands came out of California. Some of the greatest skateboarders came out oh. of California. And now you have this fucking sliding that was in California. Like, California is the fucking state to be in, man. It really fucking is, dude. Yeah, dude. Um, So, you're obviously training. You do a couple boot camps, and, and you're feeling confident. You turn 18. What's next, man? um auditions, auditions. <laughs> so I, how did the audition did, go um i'd actually i'm gonna be honest with you it went horribly uh, <laughs> i had severe stage fright and anxiety and then i had strep throat at the same time Oof. so like it went horrible but <laughs> uh, i got casted as backup right which actually was a really fun experience and i'm actually thankful for that um because I still got like they call you in, you know, whoever backup is like they call you if someone doesn't show up. Right. But I ended up getting called pretty much every weekend. I think there was only two nights where it didn't work. Right. Which was really cool. Um, and I got to work in every single maze and I ended up on streets for a weekend, which that's was cool. awesome. So that's cool. And yeah. I'm assuming through that you, you started building the relationship closer with the sliders, with the, the all the, the teams and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we already like started because of boot camp, right. but through that season was really when I got closer with them, definitely. Right. Um obviously, you know, 2019 our first year going to um so I may have may not seen you probably through a maze or something, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Uh but um no, I I really enjoyed 2019. It was the first time I've ever been to Queen Mary and I just, you know, I fucking had a great time. I'm an alcoholic, so I mean, <laughs> you know, I like to drink, yeah. but uh, drink yeah. responsibly, please. Always, please always. Uh, I had a Jack and Coke, and they put too much Jack in it, and I was like, "This is it for me." Oh no! Oh, <laughs> it was no. more Jack Daniels than like ten percent Coke. Oh, uh, you know, I, I powered through it, and that was like my one and only drink. And I was like, "It's whiskey that will mess me up if I had like two or three beers." You know, that'd be the same effect. Yeah. So I think I'm good for the night. Um, <laughs> Secret bars are always a fun time, man. Uh, Dude, you have any, I love those. You have any experiences with those? Did you give any people tokens or anything? So I actually got to work them oh, nice. uh, a few nights. I worked the secret bar in Circus. Okay. Yeah, which was super fun. Um, until someone spilled their drink on me, that was not fun. <laughs> You're like, oh, God. Yeah, I like scared them, and then they spilled it on me, and it was the pickle drink. And I was like, great. I smell like pickles. I like pickles, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like. That's one of the things. It's like fucking. You go around all night, and your manager asks, "Why do you smell like fucking pickles and beer?" I swear, yeah. it me. I swear. Yeah, I didn't do anything. I, I just promise. did my job. I got a little dump on the thing. I haven't been drinking. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Um. Prior to obviously working Dark Harbor, did you ever go to like Midsummer Scream and stuff like that to see what they would announce and whatnot? I always have wanted to go to Midsummer Scream. I'd never gotten the chance to. Not yet. Well, I mean. I was so caught up in like cosplay conventions right. that like it overlapped with Midsummer Scream. Yeah. I never really got the chance to go. So will you be attending Awaken the Spirits? Definitely. You will definitely and see it there. Birthday weekend. We're going to turn up, man. Definitely. Oh, hell yeah, dude. We're turning up, man. Uh, that's cool, though, man. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of people know you, too, for cosplay. Um, you, you gained quite a following on there, and then you kind of like you, you rebooted yourself, and, you know, you... You're going in stronger, better. Um, tell me a little bit about the cosplay world, man. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. I go to Comic Cons, I go to all these conventions, and I see a lot of great cosplayers out there, man. Tell me what the what that world's like, man. It's a lot. Uh, when I first went into it, I had no idea what I was doing, um, but it's amazing. Like 
just building cosplays and then going to a convention and meeting so many other people that have the same interests as you right, and right. then seeing what they create it's insane yeah man. It, it, tell me about it man i've been to so many conventions uh in the in the past i've been to san diego comic-con two years i did anaheim comic-con long beach comic-con you know i've been to all these conventions and every time i go i'm always impressed by someone's cosplay every time you know, and one of my favorite cosplays that you do from, and we talk about this all the time, is from one of our v favorite video games, which is Borderlands 2. That's Handsome Jack. Um, <laughs> tell me how long it takes to actually do that makeup, dude, because that is fucking spot on. All right. You're not going to believe me, uh, but nowadays it takes me 30 to 40 minutes. You're that fast on it now, huh? I'm that fast on it. When I first wow. did it, it took me two hours. Two hours. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, because you get it down to like, you know, obviously if anyone knows Borderlands, their their specific style for the art of the game is, is more like comic book cartoony type yeah. art. Um, so the like game, you know, purposely looks kind of different from other shooter FPS games and stuff. Um, so they, they really set the bar when they made that game to, to try to be different than the competition. Uh Currently has spawned out, uh, what are we looking at, five video games? Um, I think, yeah. With yeah. a couple of cameo appearances on other games and, and references and whatnot. Now in production right now, a fucking major motion picture uh, directed by Eli Roth, which I'm super stoked for. Is it? Are they making a movie for They're it? They're making a movie. Uh, oh, let's go. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. I know that much. Uh, Kevin Hart's in it. Jack Black's in it. Holy shit. Kevin Hart, you know who Kevin Hart's playing too? Who's Kevin Hart playing? He's playing Roland. Is he? Dude, I'm, he's I gonna am, be amazing as him. I'm super stoked and kind of a little iffy about it. I know he's a big time comedy person, and Roland's a very serious character. So I think it would be a good like change because Kevin Hart always does comedy. It'd yeah. be nice to see him in like a serious role. Serious role, maybe mixed with a little bit of comedy. Yeah. Uh, I, I I would hope that Jack Black's gonna play Claptrap, but uh, Dude, that would be so good. <laughs> that would make sense, you know what I mean? It'd be funny. Lord. I think I want to say Jamie Lee Curtis might be playing uh, the scientist. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean that that's the most fit role I can see her in. Yeah, uh, but it could be something else. I don't know. Um, but there was a, a pretty good cast to it, and the fact that Eli Ross directing it, like I love Eli. Oh Ross, yeah. So, um, both as an actor and as a director, but uh, yeah, I mean. Handsome Jack, dude, is, is probably one of the most iconic characters in that franchise to this day. Uh, after Borderlands 2 came out, you know, he was a really big fucking, the, the main villain. And then uh, you saw him in the pre-sequel as yep. how he became the villain. And then you saw him in uh, Tales from the Borderlands as, like, uh, inside the main character's head. And to top it off in Borderlands 3, in this Moxie's DLC, you yep. had him yep. as uh, his twin brother. <laughs> Yo, Timothy. That's that. Oh, man, what is by far your favorite Borderlands game? It's tough because I absolutely adore Borderlands Two. Right. But I really enjoyed pre sequel because it showed you how Handsome Jack became Handsome Jack. Yeah. Like it runs through all the you know torment and everything he went through and everyone backstabbing him. Yeah. And yeah. just to watch his personality change, I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, no, yeah, because he starts as a good guy. He's like yep. kind of just a, a, a like not really a nobody, but he's like up there with Hyperion, but like not too like running it yet. And then you start seeing him like people, yeah, people betray him and stuff. So you feel bad for him after you really see that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was known for his looks and everything and stuff, and then he had to like staple his fucking face back to his. Yeah. That's nuts, dude. Can you imagine yeah. doing that shit in real life? What's up? <sighs> Imagine doing something like that in real life. Dude, no, I. He has it like hooked onto his face too. Yeah, dude, like. it's. I mean, and that's the that's the and that's the one thing I I pay attention to detail wise in cosplays is how well they can get the face because a big portion of who Jack is is his face, his and that's face, something yeah. you 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 really nail every time. Now, do you you're rocking the wig for a hair, or is that yes, a, yeah, yes, yes, it's a wig. Yeah, yeah, because I've seen your hair and I'm like the orange and black. And what you yeah. had was like, ah, it's not yeah. adding up here. Um, so you do the wig. Uh, you have a great makeup spot on. How long? So what about the costume? Did you have to make that from scratch or did you buy it little by little? So I actually got all of it 
from Goodwill. Nice. <laughs> and I kind of pieced it together and like the echo recorder up here. Right. Is entirely made out of cardboard. Fuck. Hell <laughs> bought, yeah, dude. Yeah, I bought a light off Amazon and then I like maneuvered the cardboard together and stuck it on. Um, and then it's all painted and cell shaded with like different paints. When I first did it, I used Sharpie to cell shade. So like whatever yeah. works, right? Whatever works. I think what's next is we got to get you a uh, a replica Borderlands gun. I used to have one actually. Yeah, which one? Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it was this giant one. Uh, the Company Man. That's what it was called. Okay. I had the Company Man gun, and it was like full cell shaded. It was an old Nerf gun that me and my friend completely like dismantled and like built back. It was so cool. That's awesome, dude. I mean, obviously, if you guys are aware too, a big part of Borderlands is is the loot, the the guns, everything you get armor and stuff. So that's how you really level up your character. Um, you weren't a big fan of Borderlands Three, though, were you? No, not really. No. I couldn't get behind the new villains, if I'm being honest. Oh, the the, the twins. The twins. Their character design was so cool, but like the, the brother bothered that... me, but the girl was just like. I, it, they did a really good job writing that because it made me actually like I've always said, you know, if if someone does good in something that like a role or something and they piss me off or they do their job to like be that role, then they're a good actor for doing that. Oh yeah, you know I know. Mean? And I was pissed off to that whole story because I was like, These motherfuckers are killing people left and right. I don't like I... It. it. It's bothering me. I'm defenseless. And then what about like when you got that false ending at the end of Borderlands 3 though where it says it's about to Borderlands 3 will continue will to be continued in 3 2 1 <laughs> Dude, I was so mad for like that split second and I was like okay. All right. We're fine. We're good. We're good. We're, good. we're still going. It, we're it still tripped in. me up. <laughs> I was the same way, dude. I was like, "Oh, well, we're, we're still in business. This is like Marvel <laughs> like post credit scene. I ain't fucking leaving until this game's done." That's not how this game's ending. Um yeah, no, I, I, you know what? I actually enjoyed Borderlands three not as much as I loved two. Had fun with pre sequel. Um, one was a little slow for me because when I first started playing Borderlands, I jumped right into two. I did the same thing. So, yeah, so when I went back to play one, it just it didn't feel right, and uh, I had to wait for them to re actually remaster it just so I can have that feel to play it. So yeah, yeah. I, that's the only one I haven't fully finished. Yeah, Borderlands one. Just I'm like almost, I'm, I'm pretty deep into it. I haven't fully finished it, but I'm pretty deep into it. Maybe we got to hop on and fucking finish that shit finally. I'm, I'm down. I'm down, <laughs> man. Uh, what other cosplays have you done in the past, man? Besides, I mean, Handsome Jack obviously is your most notable that a lot of people will probably recognize you from, and that's a lot what's on your page too with uh, our good friend Cherry as yeah. uh, Miss Moxie, one of my <laughs> other favorite characters. Um, what other cosplays have you done in the past, though? Oh boy. Um, I've done a lot of anime cosplays for sure. Um, and what else? I don't know if you know the comic Lore Olympus at okay. all, but I've done Hades from that. Um, I've also done a few other Borderlands cosplays as well. I've done Nisha, I've done Moxie, and then I did Reese way back when. Nice. Um, yeah. Oh, I've also done Spider-Man. That one was really fun. Oh, which Spider-Man? Like from... Not any specific, but I had like the full Zentai suit. Okay. So I had like the full Spider Man suit, which was really cool. Nice. I did. Yeah. And uh, then you do a lot uh, of so you do a lot of anime, a lot of um comic book style video game stuff, pop culture in yeah. a way. Yeah. Um, what's a dream one that you want to accomplish one of these days? I have a few. Um, my OG one that I have to do is Laura Croft from Tomb Raider. Nice. I just have to do it. She was my first crush, video game crush. Like, I got to do that Still one. Still is my video game crush, man. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're not, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, and then I want to do um, Urza Scarlet from Fairy Tale. Okay. She has, like, this full set of armor with, like, these swords coming out. I really want to do that one. Oof, that'd be a good one. Yeah. And then I have a few horror ones. I really want to do Chucky. I love Chucky so much. I don't want to cosplay him. Chucky would be interesting. I was thinking about Chucky right now. I was thinking because there's a lot of variations of him. So which one would you do? Like stitched up face, 
baby oh, the face. Stitched up face. Stitched up. For sure. So you're yeah. looking more like uh three through or was it was it bride and seed and was it three two? Yeah. It was three two, right? Yeah. Um yeah, that's I think that's the most iconic Chucky if you really think about it too, you know what I mean, man? Oh yeah. There Especially also with like Tiffany. Yeah, yeah. Nah, dude. You gotta find yeah, that's what you gotta get. Get Cherry to do Tiffany. <laughs> You're right. She'd actually be really good as her. Get her a blonde wig and and get the whole outfit together. I mean, that'd be that'd be a good cosplay. Be a fun one. I'd have to shoot that one. Maybe take that one to uh, Story Films. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, that'd be a good time. Honestly, dude, I I've been getting into the world of cosplay more and more. The one character I'm I'm looking at cosplaying right now is uh, from Resident Evil Eight, which is the the guy with the the giant kind of like hammer thing. His name's Heisenberg. Yes, please, dude. You'd be yeah. so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at doing that right now because uh, I love his... What? First off, I love his style. Guy's fucking oh, yeah. trench coat, boots, you know, he's got the, you know, the hat, the glasses. I just picked up a pair of those glasses, too, so perfect Did timing. You? <laughs> uh, and then his giant hammer is great. Um, oh, yeah. And I think I have a... I used to have a cigar around here somewhere, but I can get a cigar, and he smokes a cigar, so... I, I definitely want to do that. Obviously, we just saw Bree. She just did uh, one of the one of the sisters of the vampires. Yes. Um, have you gotten around to playing Resident Evil 8 yet? I have. What do you think? Dude, I actually, like, I've never been scared from a video game, but this one is actually kind of scary. Yeah. I, like, paused it, and I was like, <laughs> okay. What about that scene when you had to go in the basement and the fucking giant slither baby thing was following you? Dude. Uh... <laughs> Nasty, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so gross. Yeah, I, I fucking, I think I beat that game in like a full like three days. Seriously, I just, I, I'm I, still, I, I'm still playing it. Dude, no, I, I, once I get a Resident Evil game, I can't put it down. Like I have to beat it. I, I think I was streaming like three days and just the whole game at night. I just, I was four, four to six hour streams, dude, just going. Dang, dude. I, but I finally powered through and beat it. And my God, dude, that game was fucking, I mean, I loved I love Resident Evil 7. I've been a Resident Evil fan a pretty long time. I only no, I play can. I only play the remasters though. That's that's fair. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm so spoiled with today's video games and how <laughs> good they play graphics wise and everything that when I went back to try to play the older Resident Evils, I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. That's fair. No, yeah. I I get that. But I appreciate the art and I appreciate the stories and everything they've done with that franchise, but so uh, it started with Resident Evil 7. Then they announced they were remastering Resident Evil 2. Played that, beat that. And then right at the start of the pandemic, Resident Evil 3 remaster dropped. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. So I bought it, started playing at like 12.30, ended up finishing the game by 6.30 in the morning. Damn. Did not put the controller down. Uh, Just went straight through, dude. I had, I had a, I, you know what? You fight Nemesis in that. That's another person I want to cosplay as too. Nemesis would be fun. You should. Um, but you you fight through to that fucker so many times in the game that I, I after like the second or third time I fought him, I was like, this guy needs to die. I have to kill him tonight. I can't put down this controller until he's dead because I'm not fighting him for a fucking fifth time. And it took literally everything I had to the point where, you know, eventually you get to killing him. It's a giant fucking laser beam. <laughs> Oh, and I'm like, finally, I know this will kill him. This will kill anybody, anything. So, yeah, I played that. And then I, I was just waiting for Resident Evil 8 at, the, at that point, And Resident Evil 8 finally dropped this year. Uh, then Resident Evil, obviously, this year is their 25th anniversary. Uh, right. You know who, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic here, but you know who you can do a good cosplay of if you ever give it a shot? Fucking Leon. Yeah. I think you could be a good Leon. Never thought about doing Leon, but I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna add that to my list. Leon would be a good one. Um, but you know, with Resident Evil 25th anniversary coming around, obviously we're getting we got the Netflix animated series that just dropped recently. Uh, their partnership with Dead by Daylight um, that just dropped as well recently. Uh, Resident Evil 8, of course. They have another one called Resident Evil Reverse, which is gonna be a PvP heroes versus villains kind of thing. That's really cool. That's gonna be cool. Yeah, it's gonna be like a lot of the most iconic villains and the iconic heroes and they're gonna go up against each other in a pvp so that should be fun i'm gonna have to play that yeah um and then obviously at the end of this year we're getting the live action reboot um of 
Resident Evil with uh, a whole new cast, and they're going really off the games and everything. Um, so I'm excited for that. I'm stoked for that. But dude. I mean, it's just it's 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 a great franchise, man. I love it. Oh, oh yeah, hands down, one of my favorites. Hands down. Um, so obviously you got the cosplaying going, you got the character going and stuff. What do you want? So what's the plans for you for this year? Are you looking to go into any haunts? Are you looking to, to, to do something this year? Or are you going to just kind of enjoy this year? I, I'm debating. Um, I might work. Uh, I forgot what the car wash's name is. The haunted car wash. The haunted car wash. Right. Yeah. I might work that. Um, but also I just want to like, you know, go support my friends and where they're going. Cause I got a few friends that are going to be at knots and I got a few friends at uh, six flags that I want to go see. Right. And knots. Oh, I already said knots. <laughs> but yeah. And I got to go to horror nights. I was going to say, maybe we can sneak in a horror nights trip over there too. De- no, definitely. I've never been. So like, I feel like I'm obligated. I I'm going to tell you right now. Front of the line ticket. If you're going only one time. Oh, definitely. It's definitely. worth it. You'll get through everything. You get to enjoy rides too. Hands down worth it if you're just going for one time this season. Um, And the rumored stacked lineup, man, is looking pretty good this season. So, Oh, yeah. Got a lot to look forward to. What about uh, what about the future, man? What, what do you want to do? Do you want to do you want to get on streets? You want to you want a long lasting career in this? I, I do. Um, I think my main goal right now is streets and I want to be a show slider. I think that's pretty much what I've set on doing and I want to train to get to a point where I can do it and safely do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, um, you know, cause I, I, like I said, I see you practice all the time, man. I see you show up to the events. You really are a team player when it comes to it. I could tell people probably have looked at you and are impressed of what they see. Thank you. So any haunt that denies you though, that's their loss. <laughs> But uh, I, I want to see you. I want to see you on Queen Mary Streets, man. That'll be a fun time. See you in the show. Watch you do yeah. some crazy shit. Cause this, I'll tell you right now, man. This kid gets some fucking air when he goes, man. He like he goes full force, man. And as I, you know, this good every every practice they have to do a couple laps and stuff. This kid, his jog is like my sprint, dude. Like <laughs> this kid is literally the Flash, and that should be I'm your new like fucking Sonic. hot nickname right there, the Flash. The Flash. What, I can't be called Sonic? <laughs> Sonic, Flash, whatever you want, man. Who's ever the fastest? Uh, Let's throw Quicksilver in there. Might as well. Quicksilver? <laughs> Bro, you dye your hair silver, you can actually go for that look, though. You got a point. No, nah, but I, I I, don't know. I don't know if I could get out of TikTok as my haunt name. We'll see, man. Something something will change. I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, TikTok for me is easy to remember because I go on every fucking day on TikTok. <laughs> so that's actually how I got that name. You, you um, for going on TikTok every single day or what? <laughs> no. So, um, so way back when I had, I posted a handsome Jack video that blew up on TikTok. Right. And it ended up being an advertisement, yada, yada, yada. And so one day I roll up to boot camp and the sliders are looking at me and they're like, <laughs> I'm like, why are you laughing? <laughs> why are you like, laughing? I'm like, oh, huh. they're like TikTok. I'm like, what? They're like, your haunt name is TikTok. We saw the video. And I was like, oh. You know no. who that sounds like? And it may have been. It sounds like Hunter. It was it was Looney and Mooch and Rampage. And I forgot who else was there. But a majority of them. Looney was one of the main ones, though. Looney's, that sounds like something Looney would say. Your haunt yeah. name TikTok. Like, she would just approach <laughs> yeah. you and just say that. And I was like, no. And they were like, the vets voted on it. Sorry. Voted in, man. Yeah. Just be glad. You look like you're a patch member now. Honestly, yeah. No, I'm really thankful for the name. Just at the time, I was like, shame. Everywhere I go, I'm reminded of this video. <laughs> uh, man. Um, I mean, what about your future in cosplay, man? What's what's the, what's next, man? Do you, you looking to get hopefully some sponsorships in the future and hopefully make some more appearances? Definitely. I took a break for a bit just because of, you know, life and the pandemic. So no conventions were open. Um, But definitely, I want to get back more into it. I want to start building more cosplays, specifically like armor and stuff. I want to dive into that realm. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. You got to do, you got to do Samus from Metroid. Dude. 
I'd That's love to. They're making another one, dude. Finally, after all these years for the Switch. Are they? Like, I'm so excited. Bro. I'm so excited. I've been I'm, waiting. I was like, if they make a Metroid game for Switch, I've always said it. If they make a Metroid game for Switch, I will play the fuck out of that. Is it for Switch? It's going to be for Switch. Finally. <laughs> it's been it's been far too long. The next thing is Super Mario Sunshine 2. Come on, uh, Nintendo. Listen. I need another Super Mario Sunshine. I wish. I don't think they're going to. But I mean, when, like, they, when they remastered it, I bought that immediately. Yeah? Yeah, I bought that remaster. That was well worth the money. Um, that was my childhood, dude. GameCube, I I fucking love the GameCube. Dude, same. If I still I, have my GameCube. Man, <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't got a GameCube, but you know, I got a, I got my Switch, so you know. I mean, yeah. It's it's good. It's good. An updated version. It's dead right now, but you know, um. I got it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, man. I mean, I I I continue to see these, see you at these events, man. You 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 made a pretty good name for yourself. Um. The last story films event, man, you got a lot of good uh, publicity and photos taken of you. Um, and we had a fun time. We shot a little promo video uh, that we put up on Nights of Horror, which was a lot of fun. Um, what do you say would be some of your your strengths that you use out in the field for scaring? Mm, probably surprise. Um because I tend to move pretty fast and right. I'll just kind of pop up on people. Um, and also being gross. <laughs> um, like there was like this, there's this thing at Queen Mary where all the sliders eat maps. So the weekend I was out on streets, I would just walk up to people. And if they were holding a map, I'd be like, can I eat it? And they'd be like, you're not going to eat it. And I would eat the whole thing in front of them. Swallowing everything? Swallowing everything. And they were like, that's so gross. <laughs> yeah. Bro. How does how was going to the bathroom the next few days? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's called paper cuts, bro. <laughs> I know. I think Mooch has the record for or Vertigo has the record for the most ma maps. For the most maps. For the most maps eaten. I gotta ask him about this right now, man. You should. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta ask him about this. Hold on. We're going to do this live on the podcast. I have him <laughs> in an Xbox party right now. Do you? I'm going to ask him. You are not going to be able to hear him, but I'll get his response. All right. Hey, Mooch. Did they leave? Fuck. Hold on. Give me a second. I got to find him. <laughs> Mooch. I'll call him right now. Where to go? Paul. MVP. All right. He's gone. Oh, but well. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to verify that tonight. I really am. You should. I'm, I'm gonna I think it was it. him. I think it was him. Uh, yeah, that sounds like, I mean, I've heard a lot of fucking stories, man. And I've seen a lot of shit at haunts. It's, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a the amount of stuff we have eaten off the floor. Too much. <laughs> if you do car wash this, though, man, you get this year, though, man, you got to let us know because we'll go down on one of the nights you're working. And Please do. I'm going to come sit in your car. You come sit in my car. I mean. All right. You just sit in the back seat. You can even okay. get in the wash with us and then just jump out. Just don't get my car wet. Inside. What? You don't want a little cleaning on the inside? I don't want my door drenched with water <laughs> and soap. <laughs> then I'm after after the fucking haunt's over. I'm out on the side right there wiping it all down. <laughs> you like go through fucking, again because of like a jackass. <laughs> you, you can you can open the door when the fucking blowers come on. How about that? All right, all right, I'll That'd do be that. Be a lot more fun. I think that happened to us last year where I went with uh, my buddy Rob and his wife and <laughs> the first off, she tried to lock the doors while a clown was talking to us and he immediately noticed that and he goes, oh, you fucked up. Oh, no. Uh, it was actually played by uh, one of our good friends, Forrest. And um, yeah, it was hilarious. Uh, but we had a fun time, man. So I I'll definitely, I'll check out the car wash again, man. I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. What is uh, some of the next events you're looking forward to going to this year, man? Uh, I mean, we got summer coming, you know, summer's, we're midsummer already. Got, you know, the Halloween depots, Waking the Spirits coming up, probably all little small yep. things. What's uh, what's some of the things you're looking forward to this summer? Uh, I'm definitely going to those for sure. Um, kind of seeing what's up with cosplay conventions. There's right. a few that are opening, so it's like, eh, I don't, I don't know. But honestly, my main one is Midsummer Scream. That yeah. is, that event it, will then, we, you will know, we get a cosplay we, from you at Midsummer? 
I don't know. I don't know if I want to bring like one of my own characters or if I want to do like a, a horror character to it from like a franchise or something. Zombie Handsome Jack. So, that would be dope. That'd be really cool. But like, like some white contact right there and stuff. Yeah. And some blood. That'd be really cool. That, that's just Maybe. me being selfish because I want to see this Handsome Jack in person. <laughs> You gotta let me know when you do that and you go somewhere though, so I can fucking go and see it in person. Definitely, definitely. Because I mean, I'm, the photos are great. Don't get me wrong, but it doesn't beat in person. I usually do him to every convention. Do you? Yeah, I tried to get out of it, and it's one of my friends being like, "No, I need you as Hans Jack," and I'm like, "Oh, all right." Is that Moxie then. Yeah. So have, what about all the? You should. You, we we, we got to do is we got to get a group of people to play as the fucking Vault Hunters. And do like a fucking photo op with that, man. I actually, I had the last anime convention I went to, a bunch of my friends. I had Amaya, I had a Lilith, I had, um, I forgot Reese's friend, Vaughn, the Vaughn, guy with the little yeah. glasses. Yeah, we had like a whole little group going. Dude, that's fucking cool, man. I, yeah. I, I, what, what convention was this for, man? I gotta go to it. This was Anime Los Angeles. Okay. It's my favorite one, but they moved it to long beach so i don't know how it's gonna be next time the convention center at long beach is pretty good that's where, you, that's where they usually they have midsummer scream okay that's fair i've yeah. only been there uh for one convention and it was like only half of the convention center yeah no uh, um long beach convention center uh well midsummer they run out the entire convention center okay and, nice so the main floor is open and they have a whole another room where they do the hall of shadows yeah and they have all the panels and stuff so it's a it's a pretty good size convention um Definitely, it would take a whole day to just if you really browse through everything and just watch, go through panels, go through haunts and stuff. You can make oh, yeah. a whole. You can make a whole weekend out of it. So that's cool though, man. Anime though, they, when you go to the anime convention, I didn't really, know, I didn't realize how big Border, Borderlands is pretty big at those conventions. Yeah, I mean, like, I realize they're anime conventions, but I'll still do like comic book characters or video game characters. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's they're still pretty big. I, I've I've always been curious because I've, I've wanted to go but i'm not a huge i'm not a huge anime fan so i don't even know if i would like there was something that there probably would be something that catch my interest honestly yeah i mean a majority of it is anime but there's stuff outside of that right so and that's i'd say at least go once yeah just, just try journey. it once yeah yeah and just see what it's like and just buy a day pass and then if i like it i'll go back next year um that's cool, man. I'm 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 really happy for you, man. I like what you do, uh, the vibes you bring to the, to the team, and and to just everyone that you meet. Fucking great vibes, positive vibes, man. Always. So I mean, me and you were vibing out yesterday, just talking, just chilling and whatnot. Um, one of the only four that showed up to practice. Yeah. <laughs> Commitment right there, man. Yeah. He I'm wants committed, wants man. the fucking glory and the gold, and I I approve of it. <laughs> I approve of it. I just, I want to keep improving and I don't know. I want to be the best scare actor and slider that I can be. Right. And part of that is practice and learn, re, you know, relearning things and making sure your form is good. And also the fucking physical training too, which is killer. <sighs> but it pays off, doesn't it? Oh yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. Physical training, man, obviously is going to be killer, but it, it prepares your body. So when you do slide, you're not fucking nearly as sore the next day oh, as yeah. you would if you didn't do prepare preparations man that's mm -hmm. awesome first time i slid i completely pulled like my entire leg <laughs> yeah like yeah, i had no man. idea what was going on gotta get it gotta always get stretched up that's why i'm always telling yeah. uh, vertigo that man you always gotta stretch man drink lots of water stretch make sure to stay hydrated be a lot of fun but no i mean i see like i said i see you every week man and <laughs> and it's it's just more and more improved. I've even talked to Scott about it, and he he's even seen how big you've improved. So, you know, if you got his attention, you got more people's attention coming soon. So, thank you to thank a theater you. near you, <laughs> to, to a haunt near you, coming soon. We got to do like that's why that's that's the one. I guess that's the plan one day to do a haunt tour around the world. That would be super cool. Maybe hit like half the fucking states in in one month, and then like the next year do the other half. Dude, yeah, that would be, and to see them all compiled together, oh, that'd be sick. We'd have to like start. There's probably so many fucking haunts out there, man. 
Oh yeah. Are you There's... a fan of the extreme haunts? So I used to be, um, but as I got older, I realized a lot of them are kind of fucky. Um, so, you know, I feel like there's a, a limit on where, how extreme you can take things. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, <laughs> I, uh, I will never go to a haunt where they can touch me. No, I mean, I, <laughs> I went to 17 door, but that's not hardcore. Like, grabbing. I think that's like the beginners for like, if you're trying to get into that world, that's yeah. where you go. Yeah. That's fine. And nothing, like, nothing on, on them being bad talent anything i just no, feel like no. that's it's a well-known brand it's a well-known thing it's like probably the most popular out of extreme haunts yeah um, and that's why i'm calling it a beginner one because it is it, it'd be like me telling you if you want to go to your first haunt go to horror nights because it's one of the biggest fucking names out there you know right. what i mean exactly um but no it, it's and they're all talented they all do fucking amazing work i just will never go because i know if someone lays hands on me i'm going to have a reaction where i'm going to instantly regret that's, it's good to know your limits. Yes. Good to know your limits. Yes, because if someone shocks me, if someone shoves me or pushes me, I'm I'm throwing hands. <laughs> Unless I know you, then it's a whole different story. But I mean, yeah, you know, if if I don't know you and this shit's happening, even though I know it's part of the the, the whole gimmick and everything, I'm throwing hands. I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> I don't like to be touched or shoved unless unless I, I invite you in. But yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> That's fair. I, I don't mind it, but if it gets any further than that, I'm like, do not touch me. Yeah. No, no. We'll get really, we'll get Jean-Claude Van Damme real, real quick, man. Chuck Norris <laughs> real quick. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> uh, Jasper, man, I, I, I fucking, I always love talking to you, man. I always learn so much from you. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I'm older and you would think it'd be the other way around. But no, I like talking to people. I always learn different things from people and. I've learned so much from from where you came from and what what you do and, and how you do things, man. I love it. Um, you want to plug any social media where people can check you out, follow you out <laughs> in the future? Uh, Instagram and TikTok or cyber drifting. Cyber drifting. I've been meaning to ask you about that. What does that come from? Um, I'm a big fan of like vaporwave and stuff, and. I was chilling out with a friend and we were listening to music and the song was just talking about like drifting through the cyber web. And I was like, hold on, hold on, cyber drifting. And I was thinking, I, I wanted a new username and I was like, that's perfect. And it wasn't taken. So Dude, that was. You think of cyber, you know, you're thinking of like, ooh, another cosplay idea, fucking something from Cyberpunk 2077. Dude, I'd be so down. That'd be a lot of fun. I'd be down yeah. too. Because you could take any person's shape or form and cyber them out, man. Yeah. Try to go for straight up Keanu Reeves and everything. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I could pull up Keanu Reeves. Man. Oh, man. you probably Actually, you probably can. You got the hair for it, so. Maybe. We'll just hide the blonde streak. Just hide it. Just put a <laughs> be, be, put a little hair extension to be all right. Yeah. Or like I, spray paint it. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man, that's cool. Cyber drifting, though. I mean, I think of a lot of things when I think of cyber drifting. You know, Tron obviously is a huge inspiration yeah. behind a lot of I, that. I love Tron, dude. It's one of my favorite movies. Man, I'm just, I'm just coming up now. I'm thinking you got me in the world of cosplay, and I'm like, Tron Legacy would be another good cosplay. Honestly, yeah, but I'd probably add that to my dream cosplay. That one's, f I think, fairly simple for the most part. It's just mostly, I. Th it depends what you want to do, though. Like, if you're doing just a standard like person. All black with just uh, you got to get a disc, but you got some LED lights on it. True, true. Um, and then you have to have something to stick it on your back. But it, it's fairly simple. I would think mostly just the hairstyle, and then some of the like some of them have like paint on their eyes and stuff. And yeah, it, I mean, it depends what you want to go for, or just do your own version of what you think you would look like in Tron, the Tron world. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> and I think we should start a fucking company, man. I got this. <laughs> yeah, just fucking. All right. Just work on cosplays, bro. Fucking spend Dude, some money. I'm, I'm down. Do this shit. Let's win the lottery first, and then we'll do it. Yeah. Do it <laughs> first time. step, money. We'll get a fucking. We'll get a. We'll get a fucking spot, a studio. We'll fucking just set it up for like podcasting. Get like a little sliding area with some smooth thing. I always told mm -hmm. my slider friends, if I ever win the lottery, I'll buy a fucking warehouse just for people to slide in. Please do. Invitation only, so and dope. and you know. 
I'd, I'd invite everyone out. Like, obviously, you guys would have an open invite to come whenever you guys wanted to practice. But not only that, it'd be air conditioned. So you can fucking practice oh, that'd in the be cold. Oh, so nice. There you go. Practice in the cold. Be a nice, like, warehouse with some, like, smooth-ass ground and shit. That'd be so cool. And dude. then upstairs, the I'll, I'll have my office. And I'll have a little office for Dieterman. <laughs> It'd be like the Fantasy Factory, but I'll call it the uh, the Madhouse Chamber. The Mad, I fuck with that. That'd be so cool. Madhouse Podcasting Network, man. Let's go. One of these podcasts right here, part of the network. <laughs> uh, Jasper, it's been a, a pleasure, man. Uh, like I said, I always look forward to talking to you, hanging out with you. Can't wait to do it again, which will probably be next week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> usually is. Uh, or, I'll, or I'll message you throughout the week of something that you put up on your Instagram that I either think is great, hilarious, funny, Whatever emotion it is, we vibe together. Uh, but Cyber Drifting on Instagram and on TikTok, look him up. Good stuff. You're not going to want to miss anything he does. I'm looking forward to the future. You have a bright future ahead of you, and I know it. Thank you. So do you, man, with this podcast. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying, <laughs> dude. I'm trying. But, uh, again, thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome back anytime you want to come back. So. You Thank just, you for having me, man. Always get, a pleasure. Get on the old Instagram, send me a message, and boom, we're good. We'll set it up. I got you. I got you. <laughs> With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Miles for Podcast. If you did, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. With that bell notification, be aware every time we put up a new video. If you're listening on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, uh, Anchor, hit the follow button. It means a lot to us. It shows that you're listening um, and whatnot. But with all that being said, my name is Anthony from the Night's Horror. My my uh, guest, Jasper. You guys take it easy. You're moving into a dimension of mind. You're moving into a dimension of mind. You're moving into a dimension of mind. Madhouse Podcasting Network.